Okay, I'm back. And very rudely, this room did not clean itself. Don't mind this pile of doom, but I think my table is ready for some sewing. Hi, I'm Liz, and welcome back to another episode of Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. Hi everyone, um, happy Saturday morning and welcome to another sewing vlog. I wanted to film today because I have a big to-do list here in the craft room. It does include cleaning because that is, oh, that's the state of my desk. Um, there's some stuff on it I'm going to show you. Yeah, I have to clean. I hate that I start every single one of these videos with cleaning, but it's a must because everything gets turned into this um, as I film videos and work in here. And now I gotta clean it up. But first, I'm pretty sure one of my local quilt stores is having their third Saturday of the month sale, which is 20% off everything. I'm gonna go double check real quick and we might just go to the quilt store before we clean anything. Okay, so it is the third Saturday, but it looks like there's no sale today because they're doing a shop pop later in the week that includes a 20% off sale. So, okay, I think I'm gonna cross the quilt store off my list. I really don't need anything. I just wanted to go, but I have plenty to do here. Um, okay, so what am I gonna get up to today? So obviously I don't know, this is the start of Saturday. We'll see what happens, but on my list, clean this room and then I started a new knitting project I started a new sweater and I want to make a project bag for it um nothing fancy it'll probably just be a tote bag but I started it with this beautiful hot pink yarn um here is my little start it's a top down uh raglan sweater it is the drk everyday sweater by andrea mowry man i really should figure out somewhere to set my phone so i don't have to just keep holding it <laughs> okay i think this will work for a second uh hopefully the window should i shut it let me shut the window um okay i think that helps with the lighting a little bit uh yeah so this is my drk everyday sweater start so you can see I got the collar stitched, um, which is the two inches of ribbing. And then I started on the body um, or the yoke, I guess you would say, the yoke. And I did the short rows, uh, the short row shaping along the back of the neck. And yeah, oh yeah, okay. I was like, why did I start talking about this sweater? Well, because this yarn is, Let's see, it's called Madeline Tosh Sport, and it's in the color Pop Rocks. That's what I'm using. And um, I have these two, and then the ball that I'm knitting from. And the rest of the yarn is in the sweater. <laughs> I don't remember if I've shown this on a video or not. I've showed it, I've shared it on Instagram, and I did a few days ago. And um, basically, this is, it started its life as the orange, orange, orange sweater um, from Knitty Magazine. I'll put a picture up. And I started this probably 12 years ago, knit the entire thing except for the sleeves, and then put it away. And so I got it back out <laughs> like a few months ago, tried it on, and realized that it's too big for me now. Um, the picture I shared, it doesn't look that big, but once it was blocked, I knew it would just be too big and it was already too long. Um, and I just wasn't going to finish it as is, but this yarn is awesome and I did not want to let it go to waste. So I was like, I'm going to take apart the sweater that I knit and use the yarn for something else. So that is the DRK everyday sweater. Uh, so I have taken out the color work section and now I just have you know, a little off the shoulder number. Um, so I need to take the rest of this yarn out and I need to wash it and hang it uh, before I can knit with it. Um, let me see if I can grab. So this, all this yarn is from the color work section and I just wound it onto my ball winder as I pulled it off the sweater, but this has not been washed. So this is like super, you know, Romany, kinky style yarn actually here I'll pull a little bit out right here you can see like how crinkly this yarn is so it needs to be washed um I watched a couple YouTube videos on how to do that 
this week. So hopefully I can figure that out. So one of the things on my agenda is to undo the rest of the sweater. I don't know. It might be lower on the priority list because I do have three balls of it to work on. So it's not like I'm going to need it in like the next week. We'll see. That's one of the things on my list. Other thing on my list is, and probably like number one on the priority is to show you guys how to make a little drawstring bag for carrying a sock project. Um, and there are no socks in here because I finished these socks. <laughs> Uh, I'll put a picture up. You'll see them in my next floss tube. But I got a lot of requests for a tutorial on how to do this little drawstring bag and it could not be easier and I want to make another one so I'll film it for you. It just takes a few fat quarters. There is a written tutorial um, that I will link to that I found that is going to be the method that I'm showing you how to sew. So I'll link that for you down below. But yeah, we're going to make a bag today. Um, and then I also want to make a larger tote bag. Did I mention this? I think I mentioned this for this sweater project. Hopefully that's going to be wide enough. Oh gosh. I taught myself a new bind on. This is the two by two tubular cast on bind on. I, it's called a cast on. I'm still trying to learn, relearn all of my knitting terms. Um, but yeah, I think it looks pretty good. So anyways, what was the other things I was going to get up to today? Tote bag, tote bag, or tote bag, drawstring bag. I was going to go shopping, but yeah, I don't know. Let's start with going get a coffee and a croissant maybe from Starbucks, and then I'll deal with this room. Let's go. Okay, I'm back. And very rudely, this room did not clean itself. Somehow it maybe got worse. Not really, but I got my iced coffee. Um, without this, none of today would be possible. And I got my egg bites that I love. So yes, I also remembered another project that I want to work on today that I'm going to show you. But first, I'm going to eat some of this, drink some coffee, figure out how and what I'm going to clean. <laughs> figure out where I want to get started cleaning this room and I'll rejoin you in a minute. Rejoin. Rejoin. Mm. Okay, a lot of you very kindly told me that these egg bites that I love, um, I think they sell them at Costco and maybe also Sam's Club. I don't know. My mom has both memberships. I don't have either, but I use her um, memberships to buy stuff sometimes. Um, but I only really get these once a week. It's like a little treat. So I probably shouldn't keep a whole bag of them in my house, but they're delicious. Mmm, delicious. Okay, back in a minute. Okay, I feel like that light was distracting. Now it's swinging, um, but I turned the light off. So hi, I'm back. I've been cleaning off my tabletop so I can do some sewing. Um, I still need to clean off this tabletop. Um, ooh, and I have something fun to show you that's back here. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, I also thought of the other thing that I wanted to work on today. Again, I don't know how much I'm actually going to get done today, but um, the other thing is this. So my friend Liz Matthews and I, we did an Instagram live together uh, during Common Threaded Stitcher last weekend. And that live is posted on Liz's Instagram page. So if you're interested in watching it, it's totally available. Um, but we have talked a lot about Christmas stockings. I have stitched two of the Cooler Design Studios. Well, Cooler owns the rights now. They were in like the Better Homes and Gardens, Cross Stitch magazines from the 80s and 90s. But I stitched two stockings for myself and my husband. They look like this. And um, I know my mom has always wanted me to stitch one for her, but I didn't want to stitch the same 
design because I knew my mom obviously my mom loves quilting and um cross stitch and all the crafts like I do so her first choice might be that stitcher studio but she was like I also love the music room so the music room looks like this and I decided to go ahead and kit it all up and get it started because my friend Liz kitted up and started her first stocking from the series which is the workshop like the kind of garage workshop one and that's like it's for her dad, but it's like for her house to like have a stocking for her dad in her house. Anyways, it's very cute. And she talks a lot about it in her recent floss tube. I think it was yesterday. Uh, anyways, so I bought all my supplies from 123 Stitch. I already have the chart because I have the book. Actually, I was looking for it the other day when Liz and I talked. I don't know what I did with the book. I think it's in a... I don't know, it's on a folder on a shelf somewhere, but I have the Better Homes and Gardens book that has all of the stockings, but it's really hard to stitch from. The charts are small, they're like half, it's like split in half when really it needs to be multiple pages. So my tip is to buy the PDF on Cooler Design Studio's website. I'll link it down below. Um, the PDF is just much easier to stitch from. So I bought the Music Room PDF and I needed supplies. And I really kind of wanted to get this one all like ready to start today. And um, there's prep work to do when I stitch with DMC because I like to stitch off of floss drops. So I bought a new set of the Access Commodities oh, uh, thread drops. So they come with 30. I think I have more than 30 colors, but I think I also have another set of these somewhere. Um, but anyway, these are just kind of my favorite uh, floss drops to use with DMC. That's what I'm, I try to convert all my DMC to these. Oh, true confession. I was talking to Liz about this yesterday. My DMC storage is a hot mess. It's literally just a plastic shoe box shoved with DMC skeins. And anytime I use DMC, I put it on floss drops and I, you know, label the DMC number. And so then when I'm done with a project, I just have these like big rings that all my DMC is on, like in number order. So then like when I'm kitting something up, I can go to those rings, look and see if I have a color already kitted up, grab it. If not, then I have to go to the shoe bin and like hunt and peck through just a giant pile of floss. And so sometimes when I am feeling kind of lazy and a project calls for a ton of DMC, I just get online and buy it all instead of hunting through my DMC stash. So I don't know. I need to sort out my DMC storage, but um, that's a problem for not today. So anyways, all that to say, I bought myself a new set of floss drops and all of the colors look at this um oh I don't have I bought this all from one two three stitch because they have the best system for ordering DMC that I'm aware of and uh on their website if you go to the DMC page there's like a little box at the top of the screen maybe I can put in like a screenshot of it and literally you just copy and paste in or just type in manually all the DMC colors you want to add to cart and click one button and add them all to cart instead of just going to each number and hit and hit and hit and hit. No, it's great. So what I do is because I had the PDF pattern, I just copied and pasted my floss list into like a little note, copied and pasted that into the 123 Stitch website, hit add to cart, and then all 50 something colors of DMC arrived. And then I needed the 25 count Lugana. So this is a fat quarter of 25 count mushroom Lugana. That is what I stitched me and Rob stocking on. That's what the pattern calls for. I love the size it comes out to be. Um, on 25 count, the pattern does tell you to stitch three strands over two linen threads. And that's what I do. It is a little bit bulky, but it's fine. It's really nice full coverage since it's like mostly a full coverage stitch it's not completely full coverage but since it's mostly it actually really does look good that super full coverage at least in my opinion so um I didn't have any trouble stitching with three strands on my two previous stockings I mean these aren't easy projects there's like a lot of specialty stitches in terms of like sometimes there's over one or quarter and half stitches tons of back stitch French knots um I think sometimes there's blended threads. I think there was on one of my stockings and not the other. I don't know what's, I haven't read that far into the pattern to know 
um, what I'm getting into with the music room, but I can't wait. Uh, my sister Lynn, actually, she's the one who lives in Dubai with her husband and two girls. I think she, well, I know she's stitching it. I don't know how long ago she worked on it, but she was stitching the music room for herself. Um, so I'll ask her if she has a picture of it or what her most recent picture is. And I'll, if I have it, I'll put it in. Anyways, so this is also on my list today um, to get all of the floss onto these thread rings and labeled so that I can start this soon. Uh, we, my friend Liz and I are doing this um, as a sal and we're calling it Stitch a Stocking Sal. I'm pretty sure that's right. I'll put it on screen. And uh, Liz already started hers last weekend during Common Threaded Stitcher. And I really want to get mine started soon. Um, basically, as soon as I get my August Whip Go goals done, uh, I'm going to start my mom's stocking. And mm, <laughs> mom already knows this is not going to be ready for this Christmas. It's just not going to happen. But I'm hoping for next Christmas. That's my goal is to kind of get this done in a year so that next fall I'll be done with it and can turn it into a stocking for her. So that's pretty exciting. I actually wonder, I might still even have some of that red velveteen that I used to finish me and Rob stockings with. So if not, I'm pretty sure I got it on Etsy and can find the same stuff again. Okay, that's stocking chat. Other thing I was gonna talk to you about, uh, we talked about the drawstring bag. I'm gonna make one of those, but I also wanna make a bag for my sweater project. And I just thought I'd show you. This is the very, maybe not the very first, but one of the very first knitting bags I ever made myself, probably back in, I'm gonna guess 2006. I think this is from 2006. Um, maybe even 2005, I don't know. But this is just a very basic little square bottom tote bag with oh, an arm holder so you can hold it while you knit. Um, <laughs> and it's this really cute Alexander Henry fabric that I loved at the time. I used to work at Hancock Fabrics in college and so I we sold Alexander Henry prints and I loved them. So I loved a novelty print back in the day. This bag, one, is a little bit too small to hold my sweater project. And I use it, let's see if I can get in there. I use it to store all my knitting needles and crochet hooks. So um, I'm basically going to create myself a bigger version of this tote bag uh, with a drawstring top. I really like a drawstring top on a knitting bag just so balls of yarn don't come flying out when it, I don't know, I just like a drawstring. So two different bags, we'll see if I can get them both done. And I need to do a little bit more cleaning first though. So let's do that. This is um, a little trash can I made for my desk. That's super cute, um, but gets super messy. So time to empty. Uh, this was, was this a vintage something? If I have, think of the name of it. Oh wait, actually there's a tag on it. The Fat Quarter Gypsy. How cute is that? Anyways, it's like a little pop-up trash can. Um, and I love it. It sits on my desk and collects all my loose threads. Okay, this is a little sewing organizer I made for my desk. That's so cute. This is like a little pin cushion where you can shove some pins. Um, little pockets, pin pockets. This is my uh, By Annie Stiletto. I like to keep handy and then I have a seam ripper. I have my little friction pins, some clips, and that just like sits up on my desk. Uh, but this desk is so dusty. I need to wipe it down before I put everything back on the table. cleaned off my desk. I wiped everything down because it was all dusty and dirty. Um, reorganized my stuff. I have my little organizer that has all my stuff in it that I need while I'm sewing. I have my little fabric trash can. I have my super cute pin cushion. Um, my clappers and my spray bottle for ironing. I set back up my book stand. This is by Lori Holt uh, from the Fat Quarter Shop. These are so great. And um, I put my Stitchy Stars pattern on it. That's the last pattern I was stitching on. Obviously when I'm working on a project, um, I'll put my actual pattern or book up in that stand. But yes, okay, that's my sewing station. 
Ooh, I just saw. What is this? Oh yeah. Okay. So, um, I always leave my extra sewing machine feet right underneath my machine. And then this is, um, where I put my old sewing needles when I change them out. And then when this is full, I throw it away. <sighs> there are some cats behind me. Let's see what they're doing. <laughs> what are y'all doing? Did you find an empty box to play with? Um, yeah. Okay. The other new item that I wanted to show you guys is this beautiful little task lamp. Um, the lovely company Stella Lighting sent this to me and they let me choose a color and I chose this baby pink color and it's so, so cute. Um, let's see. Let me turn it on. Ooh, this is the Stella 2 task lamp, I believe. I'll put the name of it on the screen. Stella very kindly offered to sponsor a giveaway in this video. So one of you guys can win one of these gorgeous lamps and I'm pretty sure you're going to get to pick your own color. You don't have to get pink like I did. <laughs> I think they come in white and black also. Yeah, so um, if you want to win the Stella lamp, all you have to do is be a subscriber to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment underneath this video with the word Stella in it. And I will pick a winner in my next floss tube video. So that'll be a week from now. Um, I do my floss tubes every other Sunday. So I'll pick a winner um, on Sunday. And I'll also announce it in the community tab. Hopefully I'm putting a picture in of what the community tab is here on YouTube. Very exciting. Thank you so much, Stella, for <laughs> a really good shot of my teeth. No, for that beautiful lamp. Everything is cleaned off enough. Don't mind this pile of doom but I think my table is ready for some sewing. Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna start with the drawstring bag in case that's the only thing I can get done today. And the drawstring bag needs two or three. Well, two fat quarters and an accent fabric. So let me dig through my fat quarters and see what I wanna make this bag out of. Okay, let's make a drawstring bag. They, I think I talked about this earlier. There's a tutorial that I will link to from like 2011. And I'm just gonna follow that tutorial's measurements and instructions. That way, if you wanna go read through that, it'll make it easy. Also, this bag is so, so easy. I think it took me about a half hour to make. Um, so let's see if I can do that again. <laughs> uh, I picked out some fabrics. So I think according to the pattern, you want three fat quarters, but you really don't use all of the three pieces at all. Um, so you can go check the measurements and see how much fabric you actually need. But I did just grab out of my fat quarter stash. Uh, I decided that this is going to be my main print and it's so cute. This is an old, uh, before Ruby Star was Ruby Star, they were cotton and steel. Uh, this one doesn't have the selvage on it, but this is a fat quarter from cotton and steel back in the day. I think it was called Beauty Shop and it's got all these cute little um, bottles and hair dryer. It's just really cute. And then as the accent print for the top of the bag, I'm going to use this kind of pink spotted leopard print. This is a uh, Ruby Star Society Liana. I think that's the name of this fabric line. Um, this is actually from Kimberly Kite. Love it. And then for the lining of the bag, I'm going to use this super cute to a pink little banana print. Um, this was from Monkey Wrench for Tula Pink. So I really like to use a light color on the inside of my bag so you can see everything that's in them. So these are about to come in my bag. Uh, the other supply you need is twill tape or you can make fabric straps. I think twill tape is so much easier. So um, I like half inch twill tape and I had... I still have more of this white that I used on this bag, but I was on the Fat Quarter Shop's website and I found this little like measuring tape, twill tape, and it's so cute. Um, I'll link it down below. Everything that I'm talking about in these videos, I'll try and include links for if they exist. Obviously for the fabric, it's long out of print, but I know this is still in stock. This is 25 yards of yellow tape measuring Yellow tape measure twill. <laughs> so anyways, um, even though it doesn't quite like go with my fabrics, like there's no yellow in this, I just think it'll be so cute to have a little measuring tape as a drawstring. 
So that's what I'm gonna do. Let me flip the camera and let's get making. Okay, so let's start with our exterior main piece of fabric. And I need two pieces that are nine by 10 and a half. So I am gonna get that cut out. So now we have our two exterior pieces that are nine by 10 and a half. So I'm gonna set these aside. From our accent fabric, we just need a piece that is four inch by 10 and a half. Actually, we need two of them. So I'm gonna cut this one the same way I just cut that piece, but with a four inch strip. This one has a bigger selvage, so let's see if I can cut it. If I can get my 10 and a half. No. Okay. So I'm going to cut it one at a time. Dang. Okay. This happened on my last bag too. I don't know if anyone noticed, but, uh, where is it? Right here, there is this like navy blue stripe. And that is because the selvage, um, cut into the fabric too much. There should be 21 inches of length in a fat quarter. So you could get 10 and a half and 10 and a half. But look, it's happening here too, where I'm going to have a half inch of the selvage included in one of my pieces, meaning that a quarter inch is going to show similar to this bag, but I don't really care. It's fine. <laughs> this is just a bag for personal use. Um, but something to keep in mind, I could cut another strip out of the pink, but to me, hmm, do I want to? No, I don't care. It'll just have a little small sliver of the purple that shows on one of the edges, like happen like what happened on this bag but just keep that in mind when you're cutting out your fabrics. Okay, so here are our two four inch by 10 and a half inch pieces, making sure those are the right size. Um, they go with this and now let's cut out our lining. Okay, and then this piece needs to be 12 and a half by 10 and a half, two of them again. So I'm going to use the full width of the ruler to cut this one out. 12 and a half. Awesome. Okay. And these are my two lining pieces that are 12 and a half by 10 and a half. Uh, perfect. So now let's assemble the bag. The written tutorial has a super handy diagram that I will pop on the screen here. Um, but basically you sew your pieces together in a big long strip. So I'm gonna line up all my pieces and get to sewing. So one thing that is helpful to note about lining up all these pieces is make sure that your 10 and a half inch length that every single piece has something by 10 and a half. Make sure you're lining up all the 10 and a half inch lengths to sew together. Everything's lined up. I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and sew all of the pieces together. Just using my quarter inch foot and some neutral colored thread and I like to piece with a 1.8 stitch length. Um, so yeah, let me get all these pieces sewn together. Time to iron this. All I'm going to do is iron all of my seams open. You could probably iron them to the side if that's your preference, but I like to iron open. Mm, let me switch sides. Okay, I think that's a better angle. <laughs> oh, that's all jiggly. I probably should not set y'all there. Um, you don't need to see me iron, right? I'm just gonna iron these seams open. See you in a second. <laughs> Here is our panel all sewn together in order. Got my seams pressed open and now we need to fold this in half and pin it and sew it into a bag. So let's do that. And so you wanna fold it with like pieces on top of like pieces. So you're lining up the lining pieces and the accent pieces and the exterior pieces. And I'm just gonna grab my pins. I'm gonna start with my accent pieces and make sure those are lined up really well before I do the rest of the sides. Mm -hmm. 
And then I'm just going to pin on either side, leaving like a big gap in the middle because we want to leave a hole here when we're sewing to turn it right side out. Okay, back to the sewing machine. Okay, so actually before we sew all this together, we need to mark on the accent fabric where our little drawstring opening is gonna be. So I'm gonna grab one of my friction pins, one of the mini that I've now bought. I love these things. <laughs> um, also, I'm really happy that we all figured out how to click this one because when I opened it, I just kept pushing this, wondering what was going on. But it's actually this little, what do you call this, a pin clip? <laughs> Anyways, that's how that one works. Okay, so we just want to mark our little one inch opening directly in the center of this. So let's see. So I just marked some little lines. So I know to leave a hole there when I'm sewing. Okay, so now I'm going to sew the back together. I'm going to start up top and I'm going to leave a three or four inch hole so I can turn it right side out. And I'm just going to stop when I get to these marks and leave a one inch hole here for our drawstring. Um, yeah, so let's sew it together. Okay, we have it all sewn together. And the next step is to box our corners. So it has a little bit of depth. Uh, let's do that. Okay, I put you guys back up on the tripod for this part. So um, we're gonna box the corners, yes. So what we need to do is kind of open up the pouch and we want to pull the fabric into a triangle so that the two seams are nestled together and lined up. And that'll help keep everything square. And then we create this little triangle shape. And then we grab a ruler and we measure one and a half inches in from this point where the two fabrics meet straight down the seam. So let's see. Uh, one and a half is this. So I'm just using the angle, the 45 degree angle on my ruler and making sure everything's lined up. And then I use my little uh, friction pin that can be erased and I set this up wrong so I'm gonna have to hold it weird but you want to mark a line right here on the corner of your bag and that is what you're gonna sew over in a minute I am just gonna put a little pin through all layers so this doesn't shift around while I do the rest of my corners Okay, so I have all the corners marked and ready to go. I'm just gonna sew straight through them on the sewing machine and I'm gonna bring them right back and show you what to do next. Okay, so our corners are now boxed and they should look like this where you've just sewn straight over your corner. And I'm gonna use just my regular scissors. You could also use a rotary cutter. I just like using scissors to cut this down to a quarter inch seam allowance. And then you'll end up with this weird little piece of fabric. Okay, now it's time to turn this thing right side out. So using the hole we left ourselves, ooh, I left mine a little small, that's okay, it'll still work. <laughs> um, just gently pull your bag through itself. And while you're at this stage, what I like to do is get my hand in the lining and gently just kind of push out those corners to make them nice and crisp. And so now we have a bag <laughs> that looks like this. And what we wanna do is close up our lining. So all I'm gonna do is take this over to the ironing board and kind of press the pieces that need to be joined like so the raw edges encased and then I'm just going to top stitch um, this little opening closed and then I'll be right back. Okay so the bottom of your lining now looks like this with just a little top stitched um, 
edge because that's where we closed up our lining. And so now we're gonna shove the lining inside of the bag and make the bag. Um, so I just kind of find the corners in the lining and use that to kind of push into these corners so I know everything's like lined up um, correctly before I do the next step. Okay, awesome. Uh, let's go over to the ironing board and the sewing machine. And we're gonna finish this up. Actually, before I do that, let me just go ahead while I'm sitting here and cut uh, the twill tape we're gonna need because then we can finish everything up over at the sewing machine, I think. Okay, the pattern calls for two 32 inch pieces. I just cut 36 inch just to have a little extra because it's always easier to cut down than not have enough. So let me measure out two pieces of my twill tape. This is so cute, I love it. I think they had some other colors too, but I just really like the old school feel of the yellow. Oh my gosh, did I just immediately lose that little pin? No, here it is. <laughs> I like using these pins that come with these to like keep this intact and I thought I'd already lost it. Okay, now let's go to the ironing board. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get the, oh, make sure I'm on camera here. I'm gonna get my lining piece and my top piece really nicely aligned and press the seam all the way around so that we have like a really nice finish. And then we'll go over to the sewing machine and finish off the drawstring portion. So now everything is all nicely pressed and in place. Um, and let's add our drawstring. So we left ourselves an opening of one inch for our drawstring. So what we want to do is create a channel that is one inch wide all the way around the bag. And that will just enclose our drawstring. Um, if we left it like this, the drawstring would just be floating in four inches of fabric and wouldn't look, it wouldn't work as well. Um, so I need to create this channel. I'm taking off my machine's table because I need to use, um, I need to use this free arm. So, if you don't have one, you can make it work without. It's just easier to use the free arm at this point. So, I'm going to start on one of my edges, and here is where my one inch mark is. I'm going to start right here. You can mark um, your lines and just sew down them. I'm just going to eyeball it. This is half inch twill tape. Um, as long as our lines are look pretty straight and are about an inch apart, this will fit no problem. But you can also grab your friction pin and mark these out before you sew them just to make it even easier on yourself. I will also say this is the opportunity where if you want to match your thread to your bag or have like a contrast or do something different, change out your thread. I'm just still using my neutral. You don't really see this top stitching when the bag's pulled shut. It's not noticeable. So I'm just gonna use my neutral color thread. And so now that I'm getting closer to my other opening, I'm just making sure that I'm still on my line and I'm gonna hit right at the edge of that opening. So we have one of our lines. Now I'm gonna scoop this in and do the second line. Hmm, do I care? It's lined up over here. I just got a little bit wide and had to bring it back in. I'm not gonna seam rip it. I think it's gonna be fine. I don't think I'm gonna notice. Uh, let me trim all these loose threads and then we'll put our drawstring in. So now let's put these in the bag. You'll just wanna grab a safety pin. I'm gonna use this big one here. And I like to just go through the twill tape a few times. So it's really secure on the safety pin, something like that. And then I'm gonna feed it through one of the um, channels. So I'm gonna slide it in and we're gonna come all the way back around to the sides. So we're going all the way across. And you just kind of wiggle your safety pin through the casing like so, and pull, and wiggle, and pull. <laughs> um, when we get to the side, just make sure you're going all the way around to the other side of the bag. There might be some fabric in your way from that seam allowance, so just kind of 
use your fingers to pinch it open and you can shove your safety pin through. For some reason, I'm really struggling with this one. I'm not sure why. Um, I use the tip of my scissors to kind of make sure the opening's there. Yes. Okay. I see the opening. Let's see if I can get my safety pin through. Yes. Okay, cool. So now I'm through that and I can work my way back around to the beginning where we started. And now we want to come out of this opening where we started. Oops, and I turned my ribbon over. Um, I'm Since it's got a right side, I wanted it to be this side out. So I'm gonna kind of fuss with it and make sure um, I have the right side of the ribbon up, facing up. So I, now I have that ribbon through there straight. I am just going to safety pin these two ends together while I put the other piece of the drawstring in to kind of keep these out of the way. Same thing as the other one. But now instead of this side, we're gonna start on this side and we're gonna do the same thing. But now we do have another drawstring in there. So just be mindful of that when you're putting this one in. I'm gonna try and keep this one straight as I go so I don't have to fix it later. Okay, so I'm around to this side. So what I wanna do is I want to go past this opening. I wanna go back around to where I started. So just making sure, yeah, okay, cool. I'm through. And now I am back to where I started. So I just make sure I can come out that hole. So now we've got our drawstrings on both sides and what that enables us to do is to be able to squeeze both sides and have little handles and oh my god look how cute that is <laughs> okay let me um finish off show you how i finish off the ends of this bag okay so now that it's at this point i'm gonna get rid of my safety pins and i am going to make sure that my drawstrings are nice and even uh, let's see here. This side is pretty nice and even. This side, these two are not the same length. So let me try lining them up. Okay, perfect. And so then what I'm going to do from here, so when the bag is fully open like this, I don't want long tails. I want them to come to about right here because then when we pull it together, obviously like they get a lot longer. So I don't want them super, super long. So, so with the bag open like this, I'm going to make sure my little um, handles are facing the same way. I am just going to do an overhand knot very close to the um, opening of the back. So I'm gonna do a knot there, just real tight. And then I'm gonna do the same on this side, except this strap has flipped around, so let me fix it. And so same thing on this side. So now I'm just gonna make sure this is exactly where I want it cinch it closed. I've got my little handles. Oh my gosh, how cute is that? Okay, yeah, so I'm really happy with the length of um, my little drawstrings. So I am just going to grab my scissors. And oh, sorry, y'all are sitting on top of the ironing board and it's a little wiggly. And so all I'm going to do is use my scissors to cut a nice looking little tail on the knot. Um, this is twill, so it can fray. I'm not really concerned about it. I leave about an inch. I knot it really tightly. No big deal. If you want to hem these, you can. Um, maybe even fray check, but I don't have any on me right now, so it's fine. And then, perfect. And now we have a little finished drawstring bag, perfect to put a sock project in. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. Okay, knitting bag number one is Complete. <laughs> Pool time! <laughs> Where's Andy? Andy, get in here! <laughs> Hi, I'm Liz, and welcome back to another episode of Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. Hey, yo! Charlie, you want to do my intro? <laughs> no! 
I don't want to. Okay. Just say hi, I'm Liv. Nah. Say hi, I'm Charlie. Nah. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> Hello, bye. <laughs> Oh, you want to swim to the stairs? Hold on, let's move your foot. Hi. Okay. Bye. Turn this off before ah, it gets bye, wet. Bye, 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 bye. Hi, it's me. Um, I was editing this lovely vlog that you've been watching and it just got too long to all be in one video. So I'm cutting in here to let you know that there's going to be a part two. I made a whole other knitting bag. Um, <laughs> And that's like another 45 minute vlog all on its own. So um, I guess I'm here to let you know that to be continued. See you in the next one.